Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the BRAINS webinar today, Nonlinear Project Management for the Rest of Us. We've got a really, really great webinar planned for today with a lot of great examples of features within the BRAIN application that you can use for project management. And today is a particular interest of mine, project management. I think of project management not only in a business as aspect with tackling different tasks um, and projects that I'm assigned here at the office, but also I think of in my own personal life, project management for uh, helping my kids with their science fair or planning the next family vacation or planning my retirement. Uh, so big tasks, small tasks, it can all be approached with a thoughtful eye on project management. And the brain is a really great way to visualize the different types of projects and the vast array of different types of projects um, that we uh, have in our daily lives. So I'm going to be sharing with you several different examples and point out features of the application that are specifically helpful to project management. Now, before the brain came along, I was Still working in project management, my daily life, again, with all the different vast array of different projects I was working on. But what was I using? I was using lists in, in Word documents. I switched over to Excel spreadsheets at one point and would continually add columns or rows as uh, new features of the project sprung up. But I'd have a column for completed, incompleted, date due, et cetera. And it was really just a linear list. A checklist and I would move down that list and uh, and review the projects that I was working on but again they weren't connected all the different uh, levels the different intricate little steps along the way weren't connected to the people the documents the meeting notes uh, the art assets everything else that I needed I then switched over to um, sort of a, a, a either a Visio diagram or a Gantt chart but once again, very, very disconnected. Easier for me to see along the way, well, here are the different steps that we need to do, one, two, three, four, five, and here's the order they fall in and, and the beginning date and the due date, but where's the documents? Where's the artwork that I need? Where are all those uh, important meeting notes and who is responsible for which step along the way? Project management isn't all about me, it's about a team. And so then the brain came along and allowed us to visualize all those different aspects, the calendar, the documents, the meeting notes, the people involved in the projects, and all of the relationships can be visualized inside your brain. So let's go ahead and jump into the brain now. You can see I've got a brain open on my screen called My Current Projects. And again, keep in mind as I click through the brain that you can actually download this brain to Either use it as a, a, a sandbox, a playground to play around and get familiar with the technology, or change the thought names, change the content, and make it the seed for your own project management brain. So let me take you on a quick tour of this particular brain. I'm going to start with my personal projects. Now, again, these might not be of interest to you as an individual, but it could give you an idea of the different features of the application that could be useful. So I'll start with my kitchen project, and notice right away that I've got a Word document associated with this thought. Each individual thought in your brain can be connected to any type of digital content. So whether it is a Word document, you can see I've got an Excel spreadsheet down here. You may notice on thoughts that I'm, when I'm clicking around, I'll have web pages or uh, links to videos or other files um, that I need access to directly from the brain. And of course, launching these attachments. So here's my list of parts that uh, probably not any content in there. I'm just getting started with this, so I've attached the spreadsheet. But now I can go ahead and launch that attachment from the brain to continue on working on my document. So cabinet parts, etc. And I'll work on, on my way on down the list. I'll create some space, plumbing parts, <clears throat> and maybe I'll pl place columns for where I'm purchasing this product and how much the different costs are and comparing uh, costs, etc. But I've got all that information saved right here. I'll go ahead and click on Save. 
And this is an internal attachment inside my brain. So I can launch this attachment again at any time. It launches in its native application and I've got easy access to, in this case, this nice Excel spreadsheet that I'll be creating with all the parts that I'm purchasing for my kitchen renovation. But also notice on this particular, <clears throat> or in this particular area of my brain, I also have some graphics you can drag and drop graphics from the web, and I'll be sharing a few different tricks that the brain has sort of up its sleeve when dealing with graphics. We've got some great features for visualizing all your information, and graphics are no exception. When I attach a, a screenshot that I take uh, or a picture that I grab from the web to a particular thought, you notice that I get this nice zoomable icon. So for a kitchen renovation, that's perfect. I can have all of my design ideas uh, just little screen grabs that I see from time to time, easily accessible and visible right from the brain. Also, right here on the kitchen renovation thought, I'm utilizing the notes. I'll be talking about the notes a lot today. A great, great feature, and actually one of my favorite features of the brain application. Each individual thought has its own notes tab, so I can keep notes about that person or that part or that meeting that I went to right there in the brain without having to open up a separate document. <clears throat> and finally, in this particular area of the brain, I also want to point out, let's go down to contractors. Here I've got links to a lot of different web pages. And I'll be dragging and dropping and connecting web pages to my thoughts as well. So when I'm searching for contractors or searching for even parts or any information on the project I'm working on, of course, I go right to the web. For parts, I'm going to be searching through Amazon and, and just doing Google searches. Here, I'm finding different general contractors. Some people have emailed me, and so I'll copy that, that URL for their website really quickly. And of course, anytime I want to launch one of those attachments, in this case, a web attachment, again, the brain always launches your attachments that they're asso the thoughts are associated with in your native application. So my default browser, I'm working on a Windows machine today, my default browser is Google Chrome. So that web page launches in Google Chrome and I've got easy access, again, to all of that content. And here, notice I also changed, I'll be sharing these tricks with you today as well. It's nice to pinpoint and highlight different thoughts with some customized icons from time to time. I'm gonna have a lot of different contracts. People are advising me like crazy on different contractors that I should be using, and so I put those all into the brain. Just brainstorming right now, I'm not filtering yet. Someone shares some information, I get it into the brain, and when it comes time, I'll start narrowing things down, I'll look at their website, who really appeals to me the best, who's got the best prices after some calls, et cetera. I'll keep all those notes down below. And here I've already highlighted one. I just simply modified um, this little icon that's associated with the thought. And to do that, I right click on a thought and select to, in this case, select a thought icon. So I can change the thought icon for any particular thought in the brain. In this case, it's just to help this one contractor that I kind of like, I'm leaning towards right now, stand out a little bit. So I changed the category to, uh, it's got a category on symbols, and I could make this anything I want, a nice little checkbox. He's confirmed, he's the guy I'm gonna use, so I'll just simply add a, change that to a nice green checkbox. And here in my long list of different contractors, one is particularly gonna stand out with my nice icon that I've associated with that thought. And so it helps me along the course of this uh, project that I'm working on to identify key thoughts in large groups of thoughts. A simple, simple little feature, but one that can really make a, a, a nice impact and speed things along as I'm browsing through my brain. And of course, the web attachment, as you can see on the thought tool tab, is still there. So I can just launch from the icon or from that thought and go directly to this uh, Supreme, uh, uh, Supreme Remodeling Inc. So that's loading up that web page there in the background. So um, another area, just another example of mapping out a project. Um, and here's a particular feature that I want to share with you. Let's minimize that browser web page in the background. Uh, I talked briefly about how much I like the notes, and now I would like to show you why. So here's another totally separate type of project I'm working on, still a personal project, so it falls under personal projects. But in this case, I'm uh, keeping track of my hobby of scuba diving. 
And whether I'm planning a new dive trip or keeping track of different dive sites and locations, um, one thing is always important to me, and that's my equipment checklist. So what I've done is now, of course, I've got an Excel spreadsheet, and there's all kinds of check boxes and columns and things in there. But what I've decided to do is change that into a checklist down here in the notes. So first I start off with just a list, and I can print this particular note out. So file, print, I print out my note, and as I'm packing for my trip uh, or packing to go out for the day, I can check things off the list. But right here in the brain, I can change this to actually become a checklist. So I can add some check boxes really quickly. And this is what I really, really like about uh, the checklists in the brain. I can modify these lists very easily at any time. Exposure protection, let's say I've got some type of, of um, uh, a new type of, well, I've got everything that I need there. Gloves, boots, my wetsuit, my jacket, etc. But let's say there's uh, some type of visor that I can wear to protect me from the sun while I'm on the boat, while I'm going to my destination. Great, I can simply add that onto my checklist. So I simply add a new event or a new item, visor. Now again, this is in uh, reference to sort of just a personal list. So checklist for going on vacation, or in this case, going on a, a new scuba trip. But these checklists are really, really great for project management because we can clearly see what needs to get completed for a project, what's not done yet, and from time to time, um, I also like to utilize the timestamp right there in the brain. And a lot of the different brains that I share, if you've ever joined me on a Brain 101 or if you've joined Shelly on one of her webinars, you'll notice down in the notes section from, uh, from time to time if there's a note with some important content, Maybe it's a discussion you had. Maybe it's a, a meeting that you attended. But there's checklists, and from time to time, there's also these timestamps that we place. Timestamps are really great so you can know when that took place. Now, I'm going scuba diving this weekend, so I don't need to timestamp my checklist as I check things off. Uh, but let's say that I was planning for a vacation or planning for a new rollout of uh, a new product and I needed to know when different components were complete or when they were assigned to me. So I can just uh, really quickly add a note, completed on, add a date, and that's archived. So I always have that information. So at any time when we roll back and say, hey, let's review um, why it took longer than it should have to have completed this project, or we got done ahead of time, that's great. How did that happen? I can go back through my notes and say, you know what? We expedited a couple of, of processes along the way. I timestamp when those took place. And I can sit back and review all that archived information in one location and uh, sort of wrap up how that project went, whether it was successful or whether it needs tweaking if we're going to be replicating that in the future. And of course, the, your notes can be modified and edited at any time. There is no visor that I need, so I'll simply remove that from my checklist. So the checklists are really, really great for project management. I can't stress that enough. I love my checklist and all the different brains that I create. And it's also one of the key components that uh, is pointed out in Getting Things Done. If you've ever read the book uh, Getting Things Done, GTD, by David Allen, it's a really, really great um, uh, basically a, a methodology of approaching our busy lives and staying on course, staying on track for projects and responsibilities that we have. And checklists are a great way to get it out of your head, in this case into your brain, your digital brain, uh, so you can manage what's complete and what isn't. And there's also a few tricks that I have that hopefully I'll have time a little bit later in the demo today to share with you how I find incomplete checklists within my brain. So I've got a few tricks for that as well. And that's basically uh, being done for me with thought tags. There's different ways that you can do it, but thought tags are a great way to identify incomplete tasks in a brain that you're creating. So let's take a look at some other examples. Let's get out of the sort of personal area and jump into a more uh, business aspect. 
So here is a new marketing campaign. And again, this is a template in uh, the brain that, uh, that is available for you to download just to give you an idea of, again, different file types. You can actually link to folder directories within the brain. And let's go ahead now and bring a little bit of content into the brain as well. So I don't want to just click around an existing brain and show you what's there. I want to show you how it got there and how you can build these brains up. So we can use this marketing area or I can jump over, I think I'll jump over to writing projects and I'm going to create a new writing project. Now you've seen me click through this brain, pieces of information in the brain are called thoughts and thoughts again can represent any type of digital content whether it's notes or just a placeholder that other thoughts are, are connected to such as this example. So writing projects. I've got no content here, but it's really just a classification, a category that all my different writing projects are going to be connected to. And that's a really, really great way to group all like information together within your brain. Um, so to create a new thought, I like to drag off of the thought gate. Each thought has three small gates, the parent gate up above, the jump gate, those are related thoughts that are connected on the left, and child gate for thoughts down below or subcategories. So my new writing project is going to be, I'll call it a client presentation. And now everything that I'm doing with my new client presentation, I need to write a script, I need to compose a PowerPoint. Um, I've got a lot of information that needs to go together for this client presentation. But I can also connect this client presentation over to the clients that I'm actually working with. So this particular thought can fall into two different categories. Now maybe I haven't created that client yet. Maybe the client, we'll call them invest. So that client isn't created yet. I'll go ahead and create that thought and then connect invest to a client's thought that falls under my business, etc. But think about it. There's now two different ways to get to this thought. I can click down through my writing projects or I can click down through the path of my business clients, invest, and come down to client presentations. And that's really the beauty of the brain is that it's non-linear. So I don't simply have a long ongoing list on an Excel spreadsheet. Here's all my clients. Here's all the projects that I'm working on, etc. I now suddenly have different ways to navigate and get to this information and in the same interface access all of the notes, phone numbers, contacts, contracts, and documents associated with this particular project. So under client presentation, I'm probably going to have my, um, let's have my, uh, create an areas for my script. Now I'll be getting into a little bit later in the demo today, how you can drag and drop existing content into the brain, but it's most important to point out that you can create new thoughts and new files right from within the brain application. So my client presentation, uh, obviously there's going to be a script that I'll be following along the way. And so I'm going to right click on this thought. Now I could leave the script down below here in the notes, but in the notes, I think maybe that'll just be my outline. Be sure, mention, and it could even be a checklist as well. I'll make a checklist for uh, 2018 pricing uh, ideas. I'm going to have uh, an area in my script where I'll be talking about uh, introduction of the team. And maybe along the way for this client presentation, I'll need to discuss the company history. So they have a little bit of background of where we've come from, what our ideals are, et cetera. So just a, a rough draft, if you will, or a rough outline of the different components that need to be involved in the script. And once again, as soon as I lay out the script and start adding the content, okay, I've talked in there about the company background. Let's check that off the list. I've introduced the team. Now it's time to get into the meat and potatoes of our products and the pricing and how we're going to benefit this particular client, et cetera. That'll all be mapped out in, in a checklist and the script itself will be a Word document. So I'm going to right click on the thought for script and select to add an attachment. So I'll add a Word document. Now that list that you saw, I'll come back to that in a second. So here I've created a blank Word document. 
welcome to my company. So here's my script that I'm just starting on. Not a lot of content yet. So let's go ahead and save that. And notice that it's saved internally inside my brain. So I've got access to this particular thought at any time. So there, I've saved my internal attachment inside my brain. Once again, I can click on that attachment at any time and go on continuing to edit and modify that particular file. Notice it doesn't ask me where I want to save the document to. That file is saved internally inside the brain. And the benefit to saving files inside your brain database, uh, they're not compressed. They're not zipped up in any way. Um, they are simply uh, stored inside a files directory inside the brain folder that's created when you create a new brain database. Uh, so even without the brain running, you can still access and do a search and find those particular files. I would find them in the brain with the brain running, but if you ever need to do a spotlight search on your Mac or search in your C drive for a particular document, you'd still be able to find those internal attachments inside your brain. Uh, so there I have my attachment and noticed down over on the right is the thought tool tab. The thought tool tab gives you details about any attachments associated with the current active thought in the brain. So here you can see I've got a script doc uh, attached to this document. I can also copy and paste to create version control. Quite often, especially with project management, we're creating documents that map out different projects or, or different processes along the way. And we can sometimes reuse that information. So you can make a copy and make your revisions, but save your original copy. Version control is important really to all of us in many different ways. And here I've got maybe my first version of the script and now I want to try version two, go a different direction and name that version two. Um, so also, regardless of how many different versions or attachments you have in the brain, even if you have multiple attachments, you can click the icon at any time and select which attachment you want to open. And additionally, you can have multiple attachments, different file types associated with a thought. So I can right click and I'll go back into this um, add attachment. Let me scroll down to add an attachment. There it is. Now let's talk about this box that popped up for just a moment. Um, if you're on a Mac, we were unable to pre-populate uh, on Mac OS the add attachment uh, template list. No worries, you can populate it on your own and even Microsoft users or Windows users can do this as well. So if you don't see what you're looking for, maybe you've added a new file type on or a new uh, application onto your machine and it saves things as a .xyz. Not to worry, you can take that XYZ and save that as a template. Just click on the templates button and follow these on-screen instructions and you can very, very easily populate and create your own templates list that's unique to you. So any brain you create has your templates. You can create your customer letterhead or a pre-filled out or fill in the blanks uh, client um, examination form or whatever the case may be. You can create your own files of pre-built content and save those as a template that the brain can open again and again. So you can see I've done that with a sales figures document, a brain letterhead, etc. So very easy to pre-populate this list. And of course, I'll create a PowerPoint for this document as well. Like I said, you can have multiple attachments on a single thought. So not only will I have my scripts, I'll have my presentation and just add some quick content here. So I'll save this. Again, it doesn't ask me where I want to save the file to. That is saved inside my brain. So I've got easy access to my script. I can, again, click on that to open one of my different versions of the script or start working on that PowerPoint once again. And in addition to having all of my scripts, I'm going to have other documents along the way that I'll be referencing. So I mentioned earlier that I can drag and drop. So I'm going to open up my on my C drive. 
I have a directory where I have some content already existing. I can also drag and drop this content right into the brain. So uh, let's say I'm going to be talking about with them the budget for their website along the way. And um, that's going to be part of the project, a key component of the project. I'll simply drag and drop that right into the brain. And I've got a nice shortcut to that original file. So that's the default for dragging and dropping into the brain is to create a shortcut. There are many options that you have for bringing content into the brain. You can also right click at any time on a shortcut and select to move file into the brain or copy the file into the brain. You can also go into your preferences in the brain and on the UI tab, you can change the default. So instead of dragging and dropping to link a file, you drag and drop to move a file internally into your brain. And it's really whatever works best for your environment. If you're on a network where you're sharing a lot of uh, files over your X drive or your N drive or whatever the case may be, it's very easy to create shortcuts so the originals are still there for other people on your team that sadly don't use the brain. Uh, but if you work remotely quite often, or you're traveling, you need access to all of those contracts and scripts and invoices and materials, an internal attachment might be the best option for you. That's the cho choice that I use. I move all my files internally in the brain um, because then they also sync and you've got access to those files from your mobile devices online and from uh, other machines that you're synchronizing your brain to through the brain cloud. That's a great feature that we'll be talking about a little bit later today. But a few more components with regards to project management. I also just want to point out here for my client presentation, I'm going to go ahead and link to Patrick. I do have a thought for Patrick. So Patrick is going to be helping me with this client presentation. Now, not only do I have the different components of my presentation, my script, some references that I'll be using during, uh, during that presentation, also links to people that will be helping me along the way. Notice Patrick is linked up to my team, a different area of the brain. Of course, in the notes area down below, I can have Patrick's phone number so I can contact him quickly. And meeting notes that we share together, ideas go down in the notes section. So already this client presentation is starting to collect some information. Uh, to help me move this project along and keep it moving as the project moves forward. Now, a few different components um, also that I want to share with you, other options for managing projects within the brain are documented here in this particular, again, brain that you can download from the web. We've got an area in this brain called product methodologies. And this is a really, really fantastic area for reviewing different ways whether it's within the brain or, or just project management, different approaches to project management. And this is one that uh, we here at The Brain, and I in particular, really, really like. Uh, GTD, once again, referring back to getting things done, GTD's natural planning project model. So here we've really broken down. Instead of just putting a project thought in there and bringing all the parts that you'll need uh, into to connect to that thought, here we're taking things step by step for project management, phase one, phase two, phase three along the way. It's still nonlinear because we can draw all those cross connections, but we have a uh, sort of an outline, a format to follow along the way. So phase one is your purpose. Now that can be just down here in the notes. You know, the purpose of, of this project is maybe it's a new website we're developing. We want a higher level of customer service. So I've got down in the notes, what's the purpose of the project that we're performing? Phase two, the mission. In other words, the mission is, is you know, what's it going to accomplish, not just for us, but for the people that will, it will affect. So it's going to uh, save people money or it's going to uh, uh, save emissions by by people not even having to drive to the store, but mail order deliveries or whatever the case may be. So there's a mission that you have for this project. And then we get into my favorite part, brainstorming. Brainstorming, there's never a filter. You want to put as much information as you can. You can come back and filter in the next phase of natural planning project model, which is organizing in phase four. 
So now in organizing, you're cherry picking all the good ideas that you had or the possible ideas you have. Sometimes in brainstorming, you're thinking outside the box, big picture. And right now it's not feasible to open up an office in London for this new project we're doing. Okay, that's all right, but at least we'll get a web page up so the Londoners can see what we're doing and maybe we can start shipping there. So we're filtering and narrow things down. And then finally, once you do get organized, what can be accomplished and should be accomplished, how do we do that? Next actions, where are we going to get started? So let's go ahead and utilize this GTD's natural planning project model in a new brain. So uh, sort of take a visual screenshot of phase one, your mission, your purpose, brainstorming, organizing, etc. And let's put this into a brand new brain from scratch to start modeling and managing and visualizing a new project. So I'm going to start a new brain now. And my new brain is all go is going to be I had a few ideas of some different examples, but I really like the idea of recycled bicycles, something totally random. Uh, but hey, there's uh, landfills are filling up with all kinds of scrap metal. Scrap metal is easily accessible. Let's utilize these, and it'll serve a couple of purposes. Number one, it makes a greener environment. It gets more people on their bikes and out of their cars. Uh, and maybe we can make them affordable so bikes are, are more approachable to people that can't afford them um, in some parts of the country. So um, I've got big ideas about this new bicycle company that I'm going to be creating. So I'm going to call it Recycle Bicycle. Recycle Bicycle. And now here, once again, when I'm creating a new brain, um, sure, I could create all this information in the existing brain, but I really also want to share with you today how quickly and easily you can get started uh, creating a brain for your own purposes. So you can choose from one of the brain's pre-built templates. We've got some great uh, templates for you to choose from that have already some thought uh, types and thought tags, which I'll be sharing with you in a moment, or you can create a new brain from scratch, and that's what I'll do now. So a new brain with no pre-built template, recycle by cycle. And phase one was the purpose. Phase two, notice I'm separating these with a semicolon. That's a really great trick within the brain to create individual thoughts at one time. Uh, so phase two was the mission. Phase three of my project is brainstorming. I love brainstorming. Phase four is we're filtering through the brainstorming and getting organized. And phase five, finally, is next steps. So notice I separated each of those with a semicolon. So that gives me individual thoughts all at one time. And let's go ahead and start adding some content. So under my purpose, maybe I just want to use the notes for this area of the brain. I don't need a separate document that describes my purpose. Uh, my purpose is very, very simple to create uh, inexpensive bikes from used parts. And I can go on and elaborate there. I typically like to do that in my mission. My mission is going to be more of a checklist. And am I uh, checking off every box along the way? Is it affordable? Um, are they, do they work? <laughs> they have to work. Uh, there has to be a variety. I need single speeds. I need multi speeds. I need maybe some three wheel bikes. So uh, variety. Ah, notice I have spell check, good for me. So variety, there we go. And I can, again, move on down the line with this checklist of, of does it complete all the items that I want on my mission. Um, and maybe my mission also is, you know, I've got a five-year goal, a 10-year goal, a 20-year goal, et cetera, along the way. So I want to just start off with, you know, 100 bikes in the first six months. 
So I've got some goals for myself along the way. So let's separate those. These are sort of all the time. They always need to be affordable. They always need to work, etc. But also just goals for myself. 100 bikes in uh, the first six months and maybe I want 250 in the first year. So I do another checkbox. So all different types of, of ways that I can map out what my mission is specifically going to be. Um, and of course, I'm speeding through this process just to show you different examples of how you can manage this particular project, in which case for me, it's my new business. Now's the fun part. Now comes my brainstorming. So once again, maybe I've already got documents. Uh, maybe I want to start finding links to other bikes that I really like. Um, so I love track. I'll create a thought for track. So uh, I want to make bikes that look like tracks or look like a Bianchi or look like all these fancy look bikes that are out there. Um, this is one feature that I really like in the brain as well. And I don't get a chance to demo this often. I, I use it really quickly and, and people sometimes ask me, hey, how did you find that, the website for that thought so quickly? The brain has a built-in web search. It's simply, it's keystroked to F4. So I click on F4 and boom, I'm searching the web for track or whatever the current active thought is. And the brain defaults to Google, but you can edit and modify your own list. If you want to use Bing or whatever search engine is popular at the time, the sort of flavor of the year, you can edit and modify your own search engine or even search in Amazon or eBay if you're uh, creating a brain that's all about shopping and buying materials. So here I'm just going to simply search for Google. I'll click on search. And uh, obviously it goes to Trek Bikes, the website. There it is. Now I could have dragged, I'll actually go ahead and do that. I'll drag right off the search results. So you can grab a search result in Google and drag that right into the brain. It gives you the Google icon, but when you click on it in the brain, it goes right to the Trek website. Um, so under Bikes. And notice I'm looking now for a separate URL. I clicked on Bikes and it doesn't change the URL. If I click on mountain, there it changed the URL. Any unique URL, you can drag and drop that right into the brain. And you saw earlier I did a drag and drop onto the existing thought. I can also drop below the active thought and I've got a link now on a new thought. The thought name is gonna be whatever's on the tool tab. So mountain bikes, there's mountain bikes. And then it uses the little pipe symbol and it says track that shows up on the thought. We call that the label. So what you see when you hover over the thought. Um, so there I've got a, a little bit of information on uh, Trek bikes, which I'll be looking at for inspiration. That's not going to be part of moving forward, anything to do with getting organized. Um, maybe at some point I might want to see if I can strike up a deal with someone in Trek. So it'll be there. I can reference the research that I've done on, on Trek. But moving forward, it's how I'm going to build my bike. That's really there, brainstorming for me for information. I'm also going to brainstorm on where I'm going to buy my materials. So scrap metal. And once again, I'll use the brains F4. So I'm going to search on scrap metal. That's going to be a pretty broad uh, approach. Let's say I'm starting my first office in upstate New York. So scrap metal in... New York. So I can modify what the brain is going to search for me. And scrap metal in New York. Great. Here's some great sites. Uh, there's a nice one. TNT. Okay. Let's give them a call. Again, brainstorming. There's no filter. Maybe I'm not really going to find all of my metal for my bikes from a, a scrap yard. Maybe I'm going to find, uh, uh, strike up a deal with my local Goodwill, all the bikes that come in there. I'll buy them and then fix them up and get them out the door, whatever the case may be. Again, it's brainstorming. There's no filter. So I'm just going to drag and drop, bring that right up to that thought in the brain. And maybe there's a lot of them. Here's Benson scrap metal. Maybe they're the answer for me. So I'll drag and drop. Uh, do they have a website? No, they don't. So they're out. a and scrap metal website. Oh, Met Metal. Okay. We'll open that. So again, I just clicking through, I find something I like, not organizing right now. I'm just bringing a lot of different scrap 
metal sites up to the same thought. And from there, I'll be going into components, uh, websites, web designs, warehouses. I want to start searching for warehouses. That's all going to come into the brainstorming area of my brain. Um, and when it's time to get organized, all right, it's time to get organized. I've done a lot of thoughts. I've got a lot of content here that I've built up. Now it's time to look back and start approaching it with a, a filter. So I want to look at my brainstorming. Am I going to strike up a deal with Trek right away? No, I don't even have a brick and mortar building yet. Uh, so to get organized, yeah, I need to find a warehouse. So I'll create a thought for that. No research, no content yet. The scrap metal idea, I really like that. So not only do I have that link to brainstorming, I'm going to drag a link from scrap metal over to organize. So when I'm sitting down to organize, what are my next steps? Maybe once again, I want an outline down below or I want to create uh, a document to help me with this process. I'll right click and I'll add an attachment. In this case, I'll start an Excel spreadsheet and secure a site is going to be phase one. I'll leave a few blanks for that. Uh, find source for parts. So that's going to be my scrap metal. So this document will help me along the way. And whenever I find something that I like and my different parts that I've organized, or if I'm looking over and brainstorming and I find a particular component, this TNT scrap metal, for example, I'm actually going to just copy that name. And I'll just make a note in my document. So find source for parts. I'm going to call TNT scrap metal. So this document is going to help me. The resources that I pull to help me along my organization process are all going to come from over in my brainstorming area. All those ideas that I sort of threw against the wall early on in this process. So then that'll help me get organized. And finally, I can come down to my next steps. Once I'm organized, I've refined my brainstorming. I can decide what my next steps are going to be. And here again, I'm going to go back to that checklist. So I've got a real estate agent. My next step is uh, talk with Barb about purchasing the barn. So maybe I found an old barn to purchase. And again, my web content, my links to Barb are going to be there. These are my next steps. And these are going to change along the way. I'll timestamp that event. So I know when that process took place. And I typically push things down as they take place in the notes, draw a nice little line there, and I move on to phase two. We've secured the barn. Uh, now we need to upgrade the electrical. So my next steps that I'm working on for this project, they weren't always thought out when I was creating the purpose and the mission. Did I think I was going to have to take an old barn and redo all the electrical wiring? No, I had no idea that was going to, to come along. So that's what I was talking about very early on today. If you map out your project in an Excel spreadsheet or in a typical Gantt chart, um, you know, you've got to always go back and add little intricate little steps along the way and, and, and fill it in with all the components that you couldn't visualize, you couldn't see from the very start. And we couldn't see it from the very start here, but do they come up? They certainly do. And here is another feature along the way that I want to share with you since I referenced once again the Gantt chart. The brain has its own built-in calendar. So you can keep track of events, how long they took, the time they took. We talked earlier about the timestamp. You can see I, I just sort of blindly use the timestamp there. I do that all the time, upgrade the electrical, you know, and talked to, to Bob Electric. So I keep notes whenever I'm on the phone. I'm constantly on a particular thought on the subject matter of whatever it is I'm discussing, and I keep notes along the way. But guess what? Bob set up a meeting. He wants to come out and see the barn and give me a price. Fantastic. I really connected with Bob on the phone. Let's create an event in the calendar. And so I'm still here on the next steps phase. I could create individual thoughts for this if I'd like, but I'd like to keep all of these just step by step, what I'm currently focused on, right here on this nice simple thought. So on the calendar, I'll add a new event. 
So anytime you click that add button on the brain calendar, it's going to associate an event with the current active thought. So if you click on it in the calendar, you're going to navigate to that thought in your brain. And uh, I'll create meeting with Bob. Now I can create this back in time just so you can see what the pop-up reminders look like. I'll say that meeting was happening on the 16th. And does it repeat or no? This would be a one-time event. It's just a quick meeting. Meeting with Bob, I can specify the day and time, etc. But you can also set up weekly reminders, daily reminders in the brain. So again, we're getting all of those tasks and responsibilities out of your onboard organic brain and into your digital brain. So your brain reminds you of those specific events. So great, I want to say this is a one-time event. I can leave additional notes here. Typically, I leave them on the, on the thought. But for the description, uh, make sure Bob knows about adding a second floor loft. So we don't want him looking around the barn thinking he's just putting electrical on the first floor. We're going to put a second floor, whatever the case may be. Additional information. I put it into the brain so I don't forget when I'm reminded of this event to share that with my new electrician, Bob. So there's some additional information here. You can set up a reminder or no, just record an event for archiving purposes in the brain. I do want the brain to remind me 10 minutes prior to the event. And I'll go ahead and say save. And there you can see before I even had a chance to finalize the save, I, I clicked the save button, but you can see I made the event one week past due. So this is what the brain reminders look like. Um, on my next steps, I've got a meeting with Bob. It's one week past due. If I wasn't on that thought, let's say I was looking again over at my brainstorming stuff or my research of Trek mountain bikes and this event popped up, from the event reminders, you can actually click on the thought name. It'll take you directly to that thought. It'll show you the event with the day down below. So you can see I've got a 9.30 a.m. meeting with Bob. So you can add all of these different events to your calendar. And let's go ahead and snooze that. Snooze for five minutes. You'll see in five minutes that'll pop up again. Um, I've got one event for my next steps. Let's say I had another event that I wanted to add. At, on the same day, March 16th, at 11 o'clock, meeting with, with Barb to sign contract. So whatever the case may be, I can add the event. Uh, I'll set up the reminder for that as well. Save. Again, there's my past due because it was one week ago. I'll snooze. But now you can see on... The, my next steps for my project on my calendar tab, I have two events for that thought. So you can navigate to any thought in your brain and on the calendar, you can click on the events list to see what's coming up for this phase. So here I kept things very simple. I created individual uh, thoughts for phase one, two, three, four. Those can be branched out in much, much greater detail down below. But again, we can see that it's very easy to add individual events and keep track of time management along the way, right within the brain. Now, also, this information, I don't want to spend too much time in the calendar because it's just one component of everything that we're putting together today. But you can sync your calendar with Google Calendar as well. So to do that, I can click on File and select Sync Calendar with Google Calendar. So everything in my brain calendar is synced up to the Google Calendar that I specify. If I click Sync Google Calendar, it's going to open up a browser. I select which calendar I want to sync to, etc. So I send it up to Google Calendar, and I set up my Google Calendar to send me email reminders. So suddenly, events that I'm creating and, and documenting in my brain can be synced to Google, and therefore I'm receiving email reminders when those events are due. So it's a really, really great feature to tie that into Google. If you use Outlook, just really quickly, I have seen in the past where people uh, set up their Outlook to sync with Google. So the brain is syncing with Google, their Outlook is syncing with Google, and therefore brain events show up all the way over in their Outlook because they've got a two-way sync going with their Google Calendar, which is free to set up, and their Outlook as well. So many, many different choices for you to, uh, to choose from. Uh, when you're setting up and utilizing the uh, the calendar within the brain. 
And then finally, the last component, or, or getting close to the last component, I also want to share with you that we can, you saw earlier, I'm linking to people with, uh, within the brain. I typically create a person thought for all the different people I work with. You can also do those with thought tags. And I want to talk for a moment about thought types and tags. It's another way to classify information within your brain. First, I'm going to th talk a little bit about thought types. So this is just a brain that's all about one project. Sometimes I have multiple projects in a single brain, and so I have to classify the different types of projects. Stalled projects, green-lighted projects, um, uh, hot projects, etc. I've got a few different classifications for those. But for this brain, I've got one project, so I want to create some thought types for urgency levels. What is important to get to next and what is not so important to get to? So I can create that with a thought type. So I'm going to create a thought type simply for urgent. And notice it creates actually a thought with a little halo around it. Um, that halo is signifying, hey, this is a thought type. It's a classification that you can assign to different types. And you can modify what your thought types look like. So on the thought type tool tab, I've created the urgent thought type. And I say I want all of my urgent thought types to be red. I really want them to stand out. And I'm going to click the icon over here on the left uh, to give it a thought icon. You saw me doing this earlier. Um, I'm going to assign my urgent thought types. Let's go up to business and say my urgent thought types have this target symbol. So they really stand out. That's an urgent thought type that I really need to address. Um, I can create other levels of urgency. So I don't want to call it not so urgent, but let's call something the back burner. So however you want to classify these different levels. I've got my own classification levels uh, that I utilize. Some people call it phase one, phase two, phase three. Um, in this case, we've got urgent, we've got things that are on the back burner. I can create a thought type called 10-year plan to really push things back. But here for back burner, um, I will modify back burner as well. I'll say back burner thought types show up as sort of a, ah, that's a little too light. You can really play around with the colors to get what you're looking for. And once again, in the business category, when you're thinking of back burner, you're thinking of something on, let's see if we can find a little, little basket of, uh, um, we'll just put it in a folder, a nice little green folder. So we're going to file that one away. Oh, and there's my reminder. I'm past due once again. So my snooze is working. I'll go ahead and dismiss that. So it archives the event in the calendar. Um, you see if I go over to calendar, you'll see it's crossed off the list, but it's still archived. The information is still there, but I dismissed the reminders. And I'll receive, after five minutes, another reminder for that meeting with Barb as well. Uh, so over on the Thought Tool tab, we've modified what our back burner thought types look like as well. So, so far, we only have two thought types, but now that we've created them, we can start, we can start assigning them to thoughts in the brain. So once again, I'm going to go into my uh, bicycle recycle. I'm still working on this mission statement. I haven't really flushed everything out yet, and I need to have a clear picture of what I'm doing. There's my past due reminder popping up again. I'll dismiss that. So I'm going to spend some time on this thought. I might even uh, break this down into the benefits of why we should create affordable bikes in this area, why we should have a way of green commuting in our community. So I'm going to be working on this thought. It's a top priority item for me. I'm going to right click on the thought and say that this is an urgent thought. So I'm focused on that quite a bit. Also, under organizing, I really, really need to get on the scrap metal. Now that I've got my barn purchased, I've got the electrical going in, I'm going to start hiring some people, it's time to start building bikes. We need materials. So I really need to get on top of that. That right there is a thought type urgent. So I'm classifying thoughts. I'm not connecting them together. My mission statement and calling scrap metal yards they're sort of connected. Obviously, they all are in reference to this new business that I'm starting up. Um, but there's no really no need to see them connected to one another in the brain. But they do share a common item, which is they're both urgent. These are things that I need to address right away. And of course, in my brain, I can go into my reports. 
And if I just refresh, you can see I've got an alphabetical listing of all the thoughts in this brain. But as this brain continues to grow and evolve, I'll have thousands of thoughts in this brain. All right, I really just need to see all of my thought types that are urgent. So there, I've filtered my search results. And day to day, I can come in on Monday morning and say, all right, I can't remember where I left off on Friday. We had a busy weekend. Uh, time to get to work. What are my urgent items that need to be addressed right away? And I'll be reminded, all right, I still have to work out that mission statement. Otherwise, when I start hiring people, I'll sound a little discombobulated. I want to have a real clear vision and mission statement that people can get behind. And I need to really move on a contract or working on a deal with affordable parts from a local scrap metal yard for my project. So two totally disparate or different topics but once again, they share a commonality. They're urgent items. And then finally, I talked just briefly about people. Let's say I decide to share this brain with my new employees that are coming, uh, coming on board as they're hired. And we can actually share a brain. Everything that I've done here today is on my local machine just for me. And I can sync if I want to the cloud, the brain cloud. You can sync your brain up to www.webbrain.com and have access to your brain online or from your mobile devices or sync between machines. And you can even upgrade your brain account to team brain. So if you're working on a project that is collaborative, let's say I'm working with Patrick and Shelly and Brigitte here at the office, I can share this brain with them. We can all make modifications and keep the same brain in sync. And I'm too busy to work on the scrap metal project. It is urgent. It needs to get done. But I'm working on other things, on hiring, etc. I'm going to have Patrick start working on this project for me. So I'm going to create a thought tag. And when I'm creating thought tags, I like to, particularly for people, use a specialized symbol to group them together in this tags list. You can really, really expand your tags list. And I always think of tags as just attributes for a thought. Maybe it's a person, a person's specialities or attributes about a client, that uh, uh, things that they like in their pre presentations, things that they don't like. There's a lot of different examples of the types of thought tags you can use. Here again, it's thoughts that aren't really connected to one another, but they share some type of common um, attribute. And in this case, it's who's working on that particular project. So for scrap metal, I'm going to assign this to Patrick. Um, I also, since he's going to be looking at scrap metal, I really want him to be familiar with the look of Trek mountain bikes. So that if he works out a goal or a, a deal with some type of local scrap metal yard, he can find the parts that will work to build something that looks like this. So he needs to educate himself on mountain bikes, the look of the mountain bike, and how they're shaped, and how much metal is involved, and where the parts go. So great. I'm going to let him know, so I'll go to my existing thought tag, that Patrick needs to become familiar with this. Uh, be sure to understand the size of the components. So I'll just make a little note. This will bring his attention to this thought because, once again, we can filter a report. Once I start sharing this particular brain, uh, Patrick can actually open up the brain and either go to his thought tag and see, oh, Matt assigned two thoughts to me, or he's bringing my attention to two thoughts, scrap metal and mountain bikes. And he can go to the thought, read the notes, find out more information, etc. And again, I can add additional tags to thoughts in the brain if I really want to tag mountain bikes as uh, this is sort of a favorite design. We're going to have a whole area in this brain about design. This one is a favorite. If we can make a bike look like this, we're going to be real successful. So another thought type simply called favorite. So Trek mountain bikes, it's something that's under brainstorming. We're thinking about those. I've assigned someone to become more familiar with that technology or, or that product, and I've marked it as a favorite. We might also in the future have uh, favorite locations where we're shopping and looking to open up a brick and mortar sales store. So favorite locations, uh, favorite people, favorite 
uh, colors when we're when we're working out color schemes, etc. So many many different thought types or thoughts within the brain will be marked as favorite, and I can get to them easily with these thought tags. So a couple of different examples, and again, just to go full circle today, I'm going to take us back to my my project's brain, a brain that you can download to start playing around with, and notice. There's a couple of different sample tags here as well, so we can find out uh, things that we're waiting on. So we're waiting to get a corporate statement from each partner, and that can link, be linked to, I don't have that linked to anything right now, but let's say that's linked to phase two of development under our website launch. So I can find thoughts that have a particular thought tag assigned with them, or a thought type, and there's quite a few different thought types here. You saw earlier I was creating under my uh, writing projects my client presentation. I'm going to type this as the client presentation is really taking off. It's a green light project. So thought types, green light projects. And once again, if I'm reviewing all the projects in my brain, I can refresh. Now this is a much larger brain. You can see there's a lot of content to scroll through. But if I really want to quickly look at all the different projects that I'm working on uh, for my company, and here's my brain for my company, I'll say, all right, show me all of my uh, green light projects. And there they are. Currently, there's only two. One is called the green light projects. One is called my client presentation. So many, many different ways to browse through all of the content and keep track of the projects that you are visualizing in the brain. So Patrick, are there any specific questions that you maybe you didn't get to in the QA panel that you would like me to address today? Well, uh, I covered most of them in the QA panel, and some of them you actually already covered as well. Um, okay, great. Sherman had a question uh, about uh, the contents of documents being searchable. Are they searchable? Ah, yes. So we didn't spend a whole lot of time today talking about search, but the brain has a very, very powerful uh, search engine built right into the application. When you are searching in the brain, let's say we're searching for uh, the word presentation. So notice I just start typing in a few letters and I'm instantly uh, introduced to all thoughts that contain that content. So PR, there's project, it's all project, a lot of words project are showing up obviously in a project management brain. Uh, but there's presentation, project phases, etc. I can scroll down, programming. So those are my instant search results. And programming tools, uh, Java tools for the web under research, I can go directly to that thought. Or I can do a more extensive search for, so I'll search for the word program. Only one thought contains the word program, but if I click on search, I can see all of the content that contains the word program. So these are in the internal Word documents, or even there's the uh, web pages. So I've got apple.com, I've got Patty Diving website, there's a PDF, and I can click to go to any one of those thoughts to review that content. I don't see any in the notes, but I just want to point out that all of your notes are indexed and searchable as well. And if you've got too many search results to sift through, you can always click on advanced and really filter that search down. So in a much, much larger brain, I can do a search and find uh, dozens or even a hundred different search results for a particular word. And maybe I'm only searching through my thought attachments for the word program files. So I'll filter it down a little, little bit. And there we go down to two, Java programming and how to create a rock solid tagline that truly works for some marketing research that we're doing as well. So uh, the search, very, very powerful within the application. And it's searching through not only shortcuts. If you decide, hey, I'm the type of person that can only create shortcuts to files uh, within the brains I create, that's great. The brain will index and search through those. Internal attachments work as well. Great, also related to search while we're on that topic, Khalil wanted to know, you can search for thoughts that have uh, two or more tags. There are ways to do that, yes, and that's really best to do in uh, the reports. So you may have noticed when I did a search, let's go back to search and go into advanced. So when I'm searching through advanced search, you can search by a thought type. 
So uh, no tag searching from the actual uh, search box, but if we go to reports, um, and let me just refresh reports. So in reports, first I can search for an individual tag, so I want to find all thoughts that are marked as waiting. There was only one in this uh, uh, this frame, so we get to it really quickly. But you can set up a custom report. And a custom report is a uh, report that you design, and it can have a multitude of different tags. So in other words, I want to search through all thoughts that are marked as calls, so calls to be made uh, that are also in reference to the CEO, but not marked as waiting. So I click that twice. Now, this is a small brain, so maybe there's not any content that matches these results, but I can save this report and, and run it against the brain over and over again in the future as my brain continues to evolve. So this is really just like a toggle switch in your custom report. So once for a plus sign, again for a minus sign, so thought, call, excuse me, I'm reading the word calls, thoughts that are not tagged with at calls, and then I can switch that off as well. So a lot of different customizations you can do, and you can use um, a multitude of these different boxes. So thoughts that are typed with this, tagged with these, but not those, and also contain a dot .doc attachment as well. So you can really set up a customized filter on your reports to run against your, uh, your data at any time. And, and that's a more, much more advanced feature of the application, but as your project uh, management brain continues to evolve and suddenly there's thousands and thousands of thoughts in that brain, this is a really, really great feature to set up your own unique custom filters in your reports. Great, and Herman had a question real quick on how you can uh, prioritize the order in which your child thoughts are displayed. Oh, okay, great. So there's a couple of different options, and that's a really, really great segue into a nice little treat that I have to share with you as well. Uh, first, let's get to a, a, an area with, this is a perfect example. Um, if you right-click on the background in your brain, you've got this option for arrange thoughts by. So if you've got dozens and dozens of thoughts down below and you're utilizing thought types, I recommend, and this is my setting that I prefer, is to arrange thoughts by type. Because I quite often do that uh, under a particular project, I'll have a thought type completed, in progress, or incomplete. So three different phases of a project I'm working on, arranged by thought type, and I'll see all my completed items first, and incomplete next, and current focus third, or whatever. It, it arranges them by alphabetically. Um, after it segments them into groups of thought types. So I don't have a good example of that here. Maybe I'll click into another brain that does, does utilize that feature. But you can also filter simply by name, alphabetically. And if you're doing that, you can say, all right, one, two, three, four. If you type in one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, then it's going to arrange thoughts that way. So that's a really, really good option for you. Um, uh, a very simple, very basic option, and we do that quite often because we see that it's uh, sort of a popular way to organize the thoughts that you're creating. Uh, but thoughts by thought type, this is my own personal brain. So I'm going to take you to a, an area of my brain, my VW area. So I'm fixing up an old VW bus, and here under parts that I'm purchasing, now notice I just switched uh, a moment ago thoughts alphabetically. So this is alphabetically, and there's red thoughts and green thoughts and blue thoughts, and it might look like kind of a mess, but my red thoughts are incomplete uh, parts of this project of rebuilding a bus. Uh, my little happy yellow guy means um, it's partially complete. I've purchased the product. I haven't installed it yet. And then my third category is purchased and installed. So ignition switch, purchased and installed, it gets the little cool guy with sunglasses. And these are built-in icons in the brain icon library that you can use. But here again, I've got this cluster of different parts that I'm purchasing. I'm going to right-click on the background and arrange thoughts by type. And suddenly, everything becomes clear. All the components that I've purchased and have installed are showing up in green. The red parts, thoughts that I have not, it's incomplete, I haven't even purchased a part yet, 
but I'm still doing the research. So down below will be different web pages, prices, etc. And finally, my little uh, happy yellow guy, partially complete. So I've purchased the part, haven't installed it quite yet. So that's one option for organizing clusters of thoughts. And there's a new option that we've just created in the Brain 9. We are currently in beta development of the Brain 9. And there's a feature there that I'll share with you. So I'm going to go ahead and give you sort of a sneak peek. I don't do this too often, but the Brain 9 is now available for download. It's beta uh, on our website. So if you scroll to the bottom of our homepage, you'll see there's uh, an information there about the Brain 9 beta. If you're not familiar with beta software, there's some uh, text there that you can read to, to better understand exactly what it means to be beta. So not fully you know, released and ready for prime time yet. It's still in active development. But we're very excited. It's, a, it's got some great, great new features. It has a tabbed interface, so we can open multiple brains and switch between them at any time. And you can also, I'm just going to open the same brain twice. So I've got a tab for eSolutions where I'm reviewing all of my different clients. And I'll have a tab for eSolutions where I'm viewing all of my different departments. So operations, I'll go into HR and staff lists. So I'm reviewing all the people and who they're reporting to. In the, this area of the brain, the same brain, I'm also reviewing on another tab, the clients. You can drag and drop these tabs into other windows. So I can move clients over onto my machine on the right here that, uh, that you can't see. And keeping on the left ours is my staff list or what have you. Uh, but the one component I wanted to share with you, let's go into clients. And let's say clients by service type. <clears throat> let's say I wanted to organize these clients. I've got some that are more important than others. Uh, but United Nations, if I'm reviewing this, right click, range thoughts by name, alphabetically United Nations is going to be last. I want them to become first. So I'm going to rename this thought. I'll click to rename. This is how we rename a thought in the brain nine. And I'll say dot zero one. By adding the period, the dot before a number, it's called our hidden ordering list. So you won't see it displayed here on the brain. But it will actually, because it's dot zero one, it moves that to the front of the line. What's going to come next? Dot zero two. So let's say that's Harley Davidson for my supply chain management uh, documents I'm working on. So I'll rename this with dot o two. So that appears next on the list, second on the list. And of course, anytime I modify that thought name, I see the full thought name dot zero one dot zero two, etc but it just helps me with a hidden ordering system in the brain, a great, great little sort of hidden feature uh, in the brain. I really like it because now I can <clears throat> organize big clusters of projects that I'm working on without having to say, all right, one, two, three, four, and have that show up in the brain. Hidden ordering system is a really, really uh, much more efficient way to handle that type of organizing. So again, that's in the brain nine beta that I have open right now. And if you'd like to be involved in the beta testing process, you can log into our website, brain.com, scroll down to the bottom, and download your own copy. And there's much, much more information about beta uh, available there on the Brain 9 beta page that you can, can read about. Great. I think that covers our questions, Matt. Great. Fantastic. Well, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us today. And uh, again, project management, we all do it, whether it's uh, managing our soccer schedules and our, our personal lives or managing projects and, and business procedures that we're mapping out, visualizing those in the brain and utilizing some of the components that I shared with you today, the checklists, thought types, thought tags, ordering systems of, of thoughts in the brain, all really, really great ways to visualize all that information. And also, I'd like to remind you that every Friday, we host a Brain 101. So you can sign up on our website. There's a link as well for online free brain training. And that's when we really cover the basics. You know, today we just assumed you know how to create a thought, add an attachment, et cetera. We dove right into organizing and using the brain for a specific purpose of project management. 
Brain 101 is all about creating a new brain from scratch, thought by thought. So please sign up if you'd like. If today was a, a little bit of some deep water for you and you want to take things step by step, sign up for a Brain 101. And also, both Patrick and myself are always available for you at support at thebrain.com. We'd love to hear from you and answer any additional questions that you may have. So please feel free to drop us a line at any time. So thanks for joining us today and look forward to visualizing your projects in the brain. Thanks, everyone. Bye.